Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Navajo Linguistics Repository. It's primarily geared toward quantum engineering topics and quantum hardware engineering education, things like that. But you could, again, use it for learning Navajo a little more in depth. What I'm currently working on is a Unicode for the Navajo character generation. It doesn't exist currently anywhere because it's a rather complicated language. But to properly generate a sequence of characters in Navajo, there's got to be a way to do it digitally. So Unicode, I find, is, is the most convenient in this case. I have a full table of the Unicode as an Excel file. So the Excel file has all the Navajo characters and the vowel combinations and things like that with the corresponding Unicode U plus notation as well as the slash U notation. So these are the sequences of codes that you would write and your computer should be able to generate these characters and call upon them. And the same for the slash U notation. The slash U notation is, as you can see, is the same uh, number combination with the U. The difference, of course, in the notation is that slash symbol and the, the casing of the U. Regardless, I would say the sequence, if you want to use this in Python, for example, the slash u is more convenient. You could place a slash u sequence like this, and then it would give you the Navajo character. Even some of the more complicated ones, like this e with the high tone and a nasal tone, or in other words, an e with a diacritic and a hook. If you want to generate this vowel sequence in Navajo, then you can create this or reference this Unicode combination. So I will show you here in Python. So in Python, I, ha I have it open actually. This, this script is available on Colab. It's on the GitHub page. If you open it, everything's open access here. But what you would do is pay attention to both notations, the U plus and the slash u notation and you also have to note that you can string together these unicodes to generate the complex characters so in this case for the original python script that i wrote it is able to take one column of Navajo characters from an excel file that i have so like the initial excel file only had one column so this entire column on the left side was the only thing that i exported from the excel file so this has all the characters that i have a desire to convert into unicode but in order to create the actual unicode with the help of code it's, it's a little difficult because some characters like i said the complicated ones you have to use more than one unicode and in python here seemingly you can only generate one unicode at a time which is which is hard to do it so best thing you can do in this case is generate what you can in python which is what i did here and then keep going and then focus on the more complicated characters like the vowels and the long vowels and then start stringing together the unicodes that we have known or should I say that we know about according to this this table up here that we or sort of like informal table it's it is a table but it doesn't have lines let's just say that anyways the Python code we can start to string together this slash u notation and it easily reads it it can start generating the correct words and then the same thing with the long vowels here and then the glottal stops with the slash tones. This is just one sound, for example, the, the TL slash with the, the glottal stop. So it's just that sound. It's kind of clicky. That's Navajo. If you were to write the word for goat in Navajo, is it? Is it will give you this one sound, and this one sound you can represent it as this string of unicodes. Hopefully that makes sense. And the same thing with these other characters like ch. It has a string of unicodes that you can put together and then you would properly generate that word digitally 
of course. So here is a correction that I created to all the, the codes. See, A is pretty easy. You don't have to correct it. It exists as one unit code. And same thing with B. But then the sounds like ch or ch, things like that, you have to start stringing them together. And those ones I had to do it manually. And it wasn't, it didn't take that long. So this is the complete table. Well, most, mostly complete. The, the main characters are here. They exist. That's fine. But the vowels, I would say they only have single characters that I've written on here. But the complete Excel file here has like the long vowels which have all of the Unicode strung together for you already. So that's what I've written here. And now that we have that out of the way, we can go back here and look at the... Let me see here. I have a PDF available. This is downloadable. This is all generated by me and corrected by me as well. So it's available for use. You can download it if you want to use it for teaching purposes. That's fine. I'm okay with that. And let me see what else. Oh yes, and there's LaTeX as well. So LaTeX is a bit more complicated because in the LaTeX format, in order to properly create this table here, um, you, you can't just write a slash u into LaTeX because LaTeX will read the slash u as as a confusing like like it will confuse the program and the program will say I think that's a command which is not there is no slash u command in LaTeX I don't think and if we were to write it on here it's not going to bring up anything that's specifically slash u but that's not what we're trying to do we're actually trying to use slash u as a letter as a representation or should I say as a notation in this table so in order to do that, what we have to do is a few tricks, which is we can employ GPT. So GPT-4 in this case, I'm, I'm sure it would work on GPT-3.5, but what you would do is upload the initial table, this table in particular, and after you create this table, everything is corrected and ready to be uploaded to LaTeX. Then what you would do in that case is give it some reference format to use so in this case in order to to create that slash u notation it needs to have some backslash and then a u plus some letters it needs it needs to be able to be represented like so and as you keep going you'll notice that when the code is generated the slash u is there as as it's supposed to be and this seems mostly correct so this is all in in latex format so with gpt it'll, it'll generate some latex format and then if you want the full script you just say i would like the full script and then it will it will allow you to download the latex script so the latex script here is something i have downloaded already so let's not worry about that i'll, I'll come down here and it says LaTeX right here. So this is the original LaTeX document. I have another copy here. I actually did the same thing. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> and what I want to do is actually replace this regular U with a backslash U. That's how you would do it. And then when you upload this document, sorry about that document up to here then it should show up appropriately so what we are doing here in this case is taking a a section of of code and we can put a u even after that curly bracket and it'll still produce the same result we should get a table that says slash u on it Let's look at it real quick. Yep, there it is. And then, for one reason or another, I don't. I think it's missing the 
the square brackets. We'll deal with that later, no problem. But as you can see here, this slash u notation is not acceptable in LaTeX, as I mentioned. So what we can do is come up here, go to the replace function, and then say, I want to replace slash u. And I want to put something else on there instead. Backslash, and say text, backslash, and then curly brackets, u. And then I can replace all, and now all of the characters will have been replaced. So there's a slash, text, backslash, and then a u. And so now we can actually import this into LaTeX. And then LaTeX will be able to properly read all of these codes. And then in this case, there are some lines that are blank. I, I did leave some lines in the table, so I'll show you here. Some tables here are blank. They don't have anything in it. I just wanted to put some space between the main characters and the vowels. But as we continue to go through here, if we want to get rid of this in the table, then we can do the same thing again. Go to the replace function, press nan, and then leave it as blank. If I leave it as blank, it will replace it with nothing. Replace all. So now I can scroll down and I see that all of the, the blank spaces have been provided and then all the backslash characters have been provided as well. All I have to do is now control A and control C. Just copy that and then I can upload it into this one text document and then paste it here as I wish. And then the other thing I have to notice, I have to note, is that this package that you should be using is called long table. So what you will notice in that in the LaTeX script is that on here it says tabular. If you put tabular and you only use tabular on here, then the problem with that is it's going to try to cram the table into one page and it will you will receive an error showing that all the data cannot fit in one page. There's there's a problem with it. So the workaround to that is to use a package called long table. So long table, you would look up look it up here on the very first LaTeX document, like uh, the main text, or if you have a main text, you would have to look for a space to put it up front. So in this case, I have uh, I have imported the table. It should be here. Long table. So slash use package, that's how you import a package, just like you would in Python. In Python, you want to import a package, you just put a... You can use a pip command, pip install, or if you're having trouble with that, you can just use an exclamation pip. So in Python, if, if this was in Python, you would put exclamation point pip install long table if this was in Python and then Python would be able to install the package for you in in LaTeX that format is replaced with use package and then some curly bracket and then whatever package name you have and then close curly bracket boom done so once that's acknowledged you can go back here back to the table you were trying to create in this one page in this one section I should say and then type in long table make sure it's long table so that way the table can span across many pages as it needs to you don't have to define the number of pages it, it will define it by itself and then make sure you put long table here at the end as well at the end of the script and then boom once you once it's compiled you will see this table here on the right and you can download this as an output we can save this and I will actually upload this this new version onto onto the linguistics repository so I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and do that here this one replace yes so here it is now here's the PDF document 
here's all this the text that I've written the model to represent how to use or how to think about Navajo words and as we keep going the language ideas the individual tables representing some examples of, of words that you would use and then something else I'm working on and then here's the, the long vowel network represented as an SVG and as we keep going we will find the table here's the Navajo character table to UTF notation beautiful and we may have to center this <clears throat> find a way to center this there's there's some code for centering documents or figures on tables figures on pages so once again thank you for stopping in and here's some other stuff that I worked on this is recording if you want to listen to some slide. If you want to listen to some Navajo it's available on Omniglot. This is run by someone else and I actually did some correction on this. I, I tried to help them correct the Navajo spellings as well and I provided some recordings. So, <laughs> In case you're interested you just look up the word uh, Navajo Cyrillic or Cyrillic Navajo. Mm -hmm. The last slide also in a echo petition, do a hilt ego illegal be bahuchin, a honey, do hun sahakis, huitas ya, a benacha a hidden knuckle, a lilic echo, a be a hilt needle. Yep, so I recorded that a couple days ago, and they, they hosted my recording on it. <laughs> Just thought I'd end up end with that note, anyways. Once again, thank you all very much, and feel free to explore the repository. Take care.